Now, you published your first book at age 10. That's pretty impressive. Did you always know that you were going to be a writer? It was actually a school project and we were meant to write a picture book about anything that we wanted. And at that point of time, I wanted to be a pediatric oncologist. You're such an overachiever. <laughs> at age 10, you wanted to, to be helping people and saving lives. Uh, yes, I, and then I later realised that I wasn't very good at science, so I couldn't be a doctor. But my mum used to take me to Queenstown Public Library a lot and I used to read a whole range of books. And one of my weird habits was that I would read in the bathtub. So a lot of my childhood books are wrinkled at the bottom because I would accidentally drop the book into the bathtub. Oh dear, and how long do you stay in the bathtub for? Sometimes several hours. And I believe that you are still helping kids in some way, right? Yes, I'm very passionate about early childhood education. So some of my colleagues and I, we work together in this uh, organisation called Readable and we teach kids from a low-income neighbourhood how to read. So we spend every Sunday for about two years now just going through like a phonics programme with them. Now you're also a lawyer by day and some say that lawyers right, are practical to a fault and poets, whereas are supposedly dreamers. So I was wondering, are you paradoxical by nature? I kind of see the poet part of myself and the lawyer part of myself as each a refuge from each other. So as part of my job, I am, you know, I have a tendency to be quite hyper-rational about things, uh, and that gets tiring sometimes. Whereas this poet part of me uh, is a little bit more emotionally intense and vulnerable. It's pretty much a perfect balance. So I imagine that you have a really glib tongue. So how does being a writer actually help you win cases? Well, for legal writing, it's often about distilling very complicated concepts into something that is simple and that is persuasive to the judge. And as for writing poetry, uh, it's about distilling complex emotions and feelings about life. So in that sense, I kind of feel that I'm operating on the same wavelength. You know, at your age, I imagine you must follow pop stars and, and, and bands and who are some of your favourite ones? I would say that I have a guilty pleasure and that guilty pleasure would include Taylor Swift. So if let's say Taylor Swift is out there and one of your favourite authors is out there and you can only have one autograph and who, whose autograph would you want? Considering my favourite poet is dead, I would probably have to say Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Now, one of your works is in full view at um, the Helix Bridge. What do you think that particular uh, poem was chosen at this particular spot? They wanted a young voice to write about Singapore's past. So the poem that I have up there, which is Lionheart, is very much about Sing how Singapore came to establish itself. And in writing that poem, I was mentored by Edwin, Professor Edwin Thambu, and his poem uh, is Below the Stairs. So it's meant to be a juxtaposition of an older, more mature voice writing about the future of Singapore and a younger voice writing about the past. So tell us what more needs to be done, right, for local poets to be more well-known overseas. I think what we really need is to have a group of Singapore readers who are very into Singapore literature. I think the culture of reading is not very much developed in Singapore as it is in other countries. And in order for a country's literature to be exported, you have to have a home base of readers who support writers and support their work.